Hello everybody, Rob Cootie here, the MLM Solution. Today is Freelance Friday. Today is February 26th, Freelance Friday. As you know, that's the day we talk about anything. <laughs> Not just network marketing, anything. But as you know, when it uh, regards network marketing, we, as you know, we'll talk about anything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We will talk about subject matter no one else will touch. You have a reason to know this information. We only talk about relevant information that has an impact, positive or negative, on your business and your activity. So with that being said, we have Freelance Friday. You never know what we're going to talk about. If you will, you can hear the babies in the background. Please forgive me for that. But that's okay. <clears throat> that's life. If you will, please utilize hashtag the MLM solution, hashtag the MLM solution to share our podcast and our various social media platforms with our fellow network marketers all across the world. They too have a right to know this information. We say thank you in advance for that. With that being said, I'm going to hop off of here. We'll be going live here very shortly. If you will, in the meantime, visit our website, themlmsolution.net, themlmsolution.net. All right, I'm going to hop off here. Welcome to the MLM Solution Podcast Show, where you'll learn the facts and hear the truth about the network marketing industry. Here's your host, Rob Cootie. Hello, Miss Marie. Hi. How are you today? It's Friday. I am fantastic. <laughs> it's Friday. Got anything planned for the weekend? Uh, yeah, we're having a dinner party with some friends tomorrow night and got the whole church thing going on on Sunday. So awesome. exciting stuff. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we just uh, we're launching a new campus in Tooele County, which is <clears throat> west of Salt Lake City with the church I'm with. We had our first meeting last Sunday in the new building. And it was uh, it was interesting because we didn't get the occupancy permit until that Friday afternoon. So to pull off a Sunday morning service with, yeah, it had some glitches, but it wasn't too bad. So I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to this Sunday. A little bit more time to prepare and there should be go. good. Exciting stuff going on. Yeah. All new ventures have glitches, and that's awesome. That's so kudos to you guys. I'm glad well, you, and, and you know how it is. It's always the technological gremlins that come and bite you in the butt, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The question is, <laughs> have you guys gotten your 22 shots and are you wearing your 15 masks? <laughs> I know you stay, there. <laughs> you stay in a mile apart. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I actually don't know where we are in Utah now. The last I heard, the the last mandate, mask mandate expired February 22nd. And I don't know that another one was put into effect. But of course, everybody's still running around with them because we've been <clears> trained to. Yeah, you know, they've been training. Yeah, there it is. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you know, the eighty-three percent of the uh, people that have been identified with the virus have worn a mask. Did you know that? The number went up. And we have a personal example. Our neighbor, her uh, <clears throat> son-in-law, which obviously his means her, her daughter's husband. Uh, they're one of these panicky people. You know, the sky's falling. The sky's falling, and they do everything. Uh, according to the law and there is no law but you know what i'm saying they do everything yeah. they agree <clears throat> so when he goes to work he's one of these people that has to go in his office okay and he goes directly into his office not talking to anybody not touching anybody and with his mask on stays in there with the door closed and he's i think he's the president or ceo i'm not sure which one it is he does not he confers over the phone blah 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 right uh, doesn't have anybody in his office, believe it or not. Most people are staying home. <clears throat> he got the virus. Wearing the mask, not touching anything, not talking to anybody. <laughs> I'm not laughing at him. Well, we certainly have sent our prayers to him because we, we realize the virus is real. 
Uh, and it does affect different people in different ways. <laughs> but the reason I tell you that story is because he did everything that he, and above and beyond, and he still got it. And here, the wife and I are out there willy nilly in it everywhere. <laughs> we, you know, we're just we're just as normal, you know, mask. What mask? Well, I'm supposed to wear a mask. What kind of mask? <laughs> you know, and uh, <clears throat> we haven't gotten a shot. Not going to get a shot. Screw that shot. And um, we haven't gotten it. You know, we realize it's a blessing at the same time. We're not stupid. But uh, the thing is, is that uh, the reason I tell you that story because you never know. You can do everything right and still get it. So why wear a mask if you're going to get it anyway, right? And 83%, it was just on TV the other day, 83% of the people that have gotten the virus lately have been wearing masks. So what does that tell you? <clears throat> just keep your distance and sanitize. That's what the wife and I do. Well, I don't think the masks really help from a health no. perspective. I mean, we've got a, I wouldn't call him a friend, acquaintance uh, whose mother-in-law um you know, retired, stays home, really doesn't do anything anyhow, spent her days watching television, getting freaked out by all the virus coverage. Yeah. You know, they visited her over Christmas and she was totally fine. Um, but she had been wearing a mask all the time. She's home alone. She has a mask on all the time. Oh my gosh. She passed away a couple of weeks ago from bacterial pneumonia. Oh. So, you know. See, here, here it is. Our, our, our immune system is not designed to be isolated no. and quarantined when you're a healthy person. Um, you have to be exposed to the stuff. <clears throat> Wearing a mask and limiting your oxygen and rebreathing whatever it is you're exhaling and your, your immune system is trying to offload is not good for you. And I'm not a medical professional and I'm not prescribing anything, but the people telling us to wear masks aren't medical professionals either because it's a medical device. One of the best things I've heard uh, recently was a, a woman went into a grocery store and wasn't wearing a mask and a gentleman approached her and of course said, oh, you have to put on a mask. And she goes, she looks at him and she says, well, you need to get a vasectomy. And he was like, what? <laughs> And she's like, well, as long as we're dishing out medical advice, you should get a vasectomy. She's like, I'm not wearing That's a mask. Awesome. And she walked away and went and did her shopping. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, if anybody knew anything about Fauci, they would not follow his direction. You just go back, factual information about Fauci. Uh, Anyway, that's but that's a great example. I love it. That's awesome. We ran into a young couple the other day. They go everywhere without a mask. And I went up and talked to them. And uh, I said, do you guys wear masks, you know, uh, anywhere? And they said, no. And uh, I said, well, what do you do if somebody, you know, comes up? And they said, well, if they ask us to wear a mask, he said, well, we'll put it on. He said, but that rarely happens. And he said, well, we go someplace, it rarely happens. Yeah. And I told people before, because <clears throat> uh, I had people do it. And I said, well, you're wearing a mask. And they go, I know. And I said, and you're six feet away from me. Yeah, I know. So I'm not worried about getting the virus. <laughs> you're you're protecting. <laughs> you're wearing the mask. I don't have anything to catch <laughs> because you guys are six feet away and you're wearing the mask. I can walk around this whole store with nothing on and, and I'd be fine because I'm protected. But, um, you know, well, I, here's, here's my theory on the whole thing. You know, personal choice. Personal choice. If you want to go out and wear a mask and you feel that protects you, it makes you more comfortable. If you there do think you're immune compromised, by all means, knock there yourself out. That's but, it. you know, you can't pass laws telling the rest of us to wear a mask and do all this preventative stuff for our health and safety. I am so tired of hearing about health and safety. I mean, it's mm -hmm. driving me absolutely nuts. Even commercials now. Oh, for your health oh. and safety, this is what you're doing. We want to keep you safe. It's like, I'm sorry. It's not my job to keep you safe. It's not your job to keep me safe. That's it's right. Like, figure your own stuff out, people. That's right. Well said. <laughs> I agree with that wholeheartedly. Well said. And I, and that's the way it should be. I saw the... Uh, I saw the governor of South Dakota. She came out and said the same thing. This reporter tried to uh, corner her. It's a video. You can see it on, on uh, fake two or YouTube, screw two. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, he tried to corner her in regards to the double mask uh, 
recommendation that the CDC was making. She and uh, he he said it in a way where he was putting words in her mouth, and she boy she came she's uh, emerging as one of the leading candidates for possibly presidential twenty twenty four. Anyway, a uh, really smart woman, forty nine years old, and uh, she goes she goes Mike, don't put words in my mouth. She said, now, you know how I feel about that. She said, that's ridiculous. I didn't, you know, I did not say that. And boy, she just ripped him up one side down the other in a very polite, strong, uh, forceful way. And of course he was whimpering in the corner was sucking his thumb when she was done. Uh, but you know, she, she said exactly what you said. She said, look, it's not the job of the government to tell people what to do. She said, people can make their own decisions on whether they want a mask or not. We're not in South Dakota going to enforce people to wear a mask. There's no such mandate and I'm not going to do it. You know, people are smart enough to do it on their own. And that's the way it should be right there. Now in Kentucky, I'll be honest with you. Um, our governor has really been pretty decent about it. He's a demon crap, but he's actually been pretty decent about it. And to be honest with you, there's no crazies running around. Uh, for the most part, we have a normal life. We really do. Uh, I do wear a mask if I go into Kroger or something like that because they ask that we do. I don't mind doing it when I go in there. But, it, I mean, the moment I come out of there, I'm, matter of fact, I'm getting to get the point where I'm not even waiting until I get out of the store. I'm taking the mask off. Now, there's a lot of places. Like, I go to the post office and all those other places. I don't wear a mask at all. And I take pictures, you know, because it's one thing to say it, but I take pictures so I can post on uh, Facebook so people can see I'm out wearing, out doing things, not wearing a mask. Because I don't want it to become the norm. You know, it's ridiculous. It's it's not this virus is gonna be around forever, Miss Marine. So we're uh, gonna do wear a mask for the rest of your life. That's it's another right. variation on the flu virus. So that's all it is. Yeah. And if you know anything about uh the Wuhan vi well, it, it's a convoluted story. I'm not gonna get into it. But here's the thing that strand of virus, uh what they call 19, has been around since the 50s. Hmm. Some of the leading doctors that specialize in, in virus. Uh, I don't know what they call them, virologists, whatever. I mean, if you read up on it, Miss Marie, it's common knowledge. Just go out and look. They've had that strand around for a long time. What they did was mutated. And uh, there was evidence that came out in November of last year, October, November. The wife and I were researching. There was actual documents in the doctors in, in Wuhan, China. It came from horseshoe bats. And it started in the Wuhan. And I'll just make this short and sweet. <clears throat> a lot of people that worked with Fauci over the last 30 years despise the guy. He's a whoremonger. Uh, well, an attention whoremonger, I should say. Um, <clears throat> he's it's always been about him. He has a very volatile temper. Um, he uh, These people that work with him did uh, refuse to work with him anymore. Uh, there's video of him coming out and saying that... Uh, Trump would would uh, experience a uh, pan pandemic, and like the doctors that worked with him said, there is no way as a doctor that anybody can predict that there's going to be a pandemic. So, <clears throat> what happened was is during the uh, Barry's administration, which is Obama, I refuse to call him who he is, but they call him Barry. They uh, were messing around with this virus here in the United States. Well, they stopped funding to that, and this is all you can check it. So what ended up happening was is that uh, Fauci was running that program and uh, the government cut off funding and said, this is too dangerous. You know, we don't have a need for this. And they cut that funding off. He grabbed the, the virus and took $2 million of public funds and ran to Wuhan and went to the uh, lab there in Wuhan. Now, when it first came out, the Wu, this virus, supposedly, they were blaming the horseshoe bat, which uh, I don't know if you guys know, Chinese people, uh, for whatever reason, is a delicacy of some type. They have a black market, uh, underground market, if you will, where they sell bats for eating purposes. I don't answer. I don't get it. <laughs> don't, don't understand it. Uh, but anyway, it's supposedly a delicacy. And but Wuhan is 900 kilometers away from the nearest horseshoe bat, and this in the Wuhan it's not sold on the black market. So there was two. There's two uh, virus labs there in Wuhan, China, and uh, the one that uh, Fauci went to 
is the one where this virus was started. Now, it was being reported in October of last year. What happened was one of the doctors who was working with this virus in this lab, his wife got the virus and it got out of control. She got very sick. I don't know if she died. I'm not going to say that. She got very sick. He started writing papers on it. So did his contemporaries. And they started out uh, sending out doctors across the world, 30 to 30 of the leading viral virologists across the world about this virus. And I don't know if in that paper it had anything to do with what their intentions were with this virus. I don't, that I don't know. But it's well known that these documents were sent out. Those doctors disappeared in November. We're never heard from again. Rumor was is that they were all killed, at least three or four of them. Now, there again, no way to verify that, but you can find this stuff on the internet. <clears throat> in November is when it really started picking up and was transferring person to person. Guess how many people left Wuhan, China in, in, uh, in 2019? How many? 153,000 in the month of November. Hmm. Guess how many left in the month of November in 2018? How many? 13,000. Hmm. The people realized that there was a and got the hell out of there. What they didn't know, and that's when the Trump administration started finding here in word. And the reason they, you know, they use it as a as a tool to attack him. You know, part of Marxism, without getting into that, you know, is to attack you all the time, Miss Marie, all the time, put constant pressure on you because you can't, as a human being, typically handle daily pressure of that magnitude. It wears you down. You make mistakes. Uh, you give up. Uh, they want to ruin your spirit. And so what they were doing was constantly attacking uh, Trump and his administration with everything they could. And they remember they said that he couldn't, he didn't act quick enough. Well, the thing is, you cannot overreact and cause panic in a, in a country as America by saying, oh my gosh, let's cut off all the travel. Let's do this. Let's do that. All these dramatic. So what ended up they doing? They started monitoring what was going on in, in November. And you remember in January, early January, he cut off all travel from China. And these Chinese people went all across the world, Ms. Murray. They didn't come just to the U.S. And that's how it got spread. 153,000 people fled Wuhan because this virus was spreading so rapidly. And there were so many people dying from it that uh, the Chinese would not release how many people were dying. And um, supposedly, and to bring this to a close, see, the Chinese wanted uh, Trump out of office bad because he was hurting their economy terribly and they could not control his administration. And so they were doing everything they could to get him out of office. And they were working with the Democrats uh, to come up with all these campaigns to attack and all this and that. And so what ended up happening was, is that uh, the release of the uh, Wuhan virus uh, was on purpose. Of course, now you're just now starting to hear that over the last uh, four or five weeks that it looks like it was intentional. The <clears throat> mainstream media will uh, not report that kind of information. And I'm not being a conspiracy. You can find this out. Even uh, legitimate uh, uh, politicians have said it looks like this was an intentional release and it was developed on purpose as a tool. And uh, Trump wouldn't come out and say that because he knew that if he did, that the media would use it against him. It's, you know, this guy's crazy. We got to get him out of office. He, you know, he's a lunatic. And uh, so anyway, it all ended up to where we are today. <laughs> so there you go. But they had to find a way to get Trump out of office. They had to find a way to slow down the U.S. economy. They had to find a way. I know it kind of sounds like a conspiracy, but the Chinese are willing to do anything. You look at what they, they don't care about human beings. Uh, outside of the elites, they don't care. Uh, so they had one of the uh, lead guys of China. I can't remember. I knew one time, one well, of the leading dim dim uh, diplomats, uh, he was caught on camera video and he was at a conference and he said, look, he said, we don't care about this virus. He said, the only thing we're concerned about is protecting the elites of China. Outside of that, we don't care about what it does to other people. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a communism socialism that everybody wants. That's be careful what you wish for. Yeah, isn't that the truth? <laughs>
So there's a quick uh, history. You can check all that on the internet. Uh, there's a lot of evidence out there. But if you're going to use, you know, I use DuckDuckGo. What do you use? I don't use Google search. Well, it, it depends on what I'm searching for. <laughs> I don't want people dictating what I what I get. You know, yep. I'm a big pro uh, Google tools. Okay, <clears throat> I'm not a Google fan at all. But the tools, you know what I'm talking about for mm -hmm. what we do. You know, you and I. But as you know, I've been transitioning over to uh, Pronto Mail and uh, Zoho, Z O H O, uh, which is a, a well-established, wonderful company that has as many, if not more, tools than than Google. And uh, as you know, Miss Marie, and I still, I, I promise you, I will get that link. I don't know what that's going on with that. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. I tried to add you as an admin. Did you ever get that? Mm -mm. No, and I, I was just going to say, be, be careful with Zoho. If that if they're that good, at some point, Google's just going to buy them out, and you're going to be back in the <laughs> big <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> no, it's true. It's funny because, um, you know, Joe Joe works for GE Healthcare, and he has for years. Oh, my for gosh, I didn't years. know that. That's awesome. Yeah, and he's uh, he. It's a funny story because he he worked at the headquarters in Waukesha, Wisconsin, for a long time, and uh, one of his buddies got whatever had a beef with the company, and he left, and he went to another medical device manufacturer in Milwaukee, and like yeah. six months after he made the move, GE Medical bought him out. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> so he was back working for him again. Oh. It was just. It's one of those things, you know, I don't know if you remember the um, the Star Trek, what was it? Star Trek first generation had the Borg. You yeah. will be assimilated. So yes, was, yes, I do. Yes. That was the running joke with GE Medical, which uh, <laughs> GE Healthcare is like, you will be assimilated. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking awesome. You know, my parents, both of them uh, retired from GE, worked there over 40 something years and used G uh, GE Healthcare. And, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with that. Yes. Um, what a small world. My mm -hmm. gosh, I did not know. You never told me what Hubby did. Well, that's a that's a big company, right? It is I a big mean, company. GE and all its different divisions is just oh my gosh. a huge company. So, Is it just uh, GE employees? Uh, I That I don't know. Gotcha. That I don't know. But hmm, yeah. I mean, G GE has many distinct divisions, right? There's GE aircraft, GE, you know, appliances Locomotive. that sold off years ago. You remember back in the era of Jack Welch, if you weren't number one or two in your line of business, he was going to sell you off type of thing. So, yeah. yeah. And you know what? I mean, I, I'm a big Jack Welch fan. I have a number of his books, love his approach. And, uh, you know, of course, it's controversial at the same time, but Man, what he did was uh, with GE was phenomenal. Uh, you know, GE makes locomotives too. Did you know that? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, they make uh, aircraft engines. Yep. Uh, and for a short time, they made aircraft here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, yeah. in, during World War One and two, no, World War Two, I think it was. Uh, so uh, uh, we have the one time we had uh, the largest GE plant in the United States, <clears throat> maybe the world that time. But it's certainly in the United States, uh, it is absolutely huge. It encompasses. I remember uh, when, as kids, uh, we went there. It had its own post office, own fire department. Uh, had its own uh, uh, sewer system. I mean, it was a self-sustaining city. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we went out there with our parents and kids, they had stoplights in the parking lot. Hmm. There were 32,000 people that worked there over three shifts. Wow. Yeah. And so they had stoplights and uh, the shifts. <laughs> I know you park in the back corner of the parking lot and then you have to commute into the you office. Do, you do. You're right. It was a mess. And I remember uh, my mom, when we would go out to pick up my dad, uh, we would have to go out there almost like 40 minutes early, Miss Marie, uh, because you couldn't hardly find a parking space and you had to get into the parking lot. Uh, before the shift change, because you had all those people going in and you had all those people coming out and to move that many people, you know, because there was over 10,000 people per shift and to move that many people, that many vehicles in a short time span was not easy. <laughs> so if you didn't get out there, you didn't get in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? And, and I can remember that like yesterday. 
Absolutely. And you have stoplights like every, I don't even know, I mean, like every hundred feet or something like that. I mean, there's a, literally a stoplight and you had to, of course, obey those. And it was all uh, synchronized to move all those vehicles and people out as quickly as possible. It was flipping amazing. And it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I actually went into those buildings. I had no idea what my mom and dad, you think, you know, uh, what kind of environment they work in. I knew it was production. I knew it was uh, a line job. I mean, that's what they did. Oh, my gosh, Miss Mary. I went in there. You're talking about a heat box. Mm. I don't know how anybody was overweight in that building. <laughs> that is freaking crazy. No air conditioning. These buildings were built in the 30s and 40s. Mm. Massive. Massive. You could probably put two or three football stadiums in one building. That's how big they were. Not only lengthwise, but depthwise. And they were three or four stories tall. Oh, and they were dark. And, and the, the floors, Miss Marie, uh, where they kept all the inventory, which was stacked is two, three stories high inventory. I don't know how now. Um, they were wood. They were hmm. literally, they were railroad ties, the railroad tie type of wood that were laid down. And, and it was uneven. It was crazy. I'll never forget that. I was so shocked. Now, of course, the part where the assembly line and all that was, was concrete, more modern, better lighting. You know, they it wasn't as, as uh, antiquated as that. But, man, I remember sweating my butt off because um, GE was going to hire the company that we had. We, I was the quality guy and um, one of the project managers for uh, one of the world's leading conveyor uh, companies. And uh, GE was looking to hire us, and they had to go out there and, Golly, Woo -hoo. I don't know about you. Could you do the same thing? Put one screw into one spot 10, 12 hours a day? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no slowing down. You don't feel good today. <laughs> Can you imagine? Nope. <laughs> you know, there there are times when those repetitive task type jobs are enjoyable, but to do it eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks out of the year, hell no. <laughs> yes, well said. Yes. And, you know, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not being as uh, – because um, you didn't do just one screw. You had a part that you had put on, and it may be eight screws. And, and if you know they had a quality uh, at the end of the line, if you did not do your job, you could lose your job or get reassigned. Mm -hmm. And my dad and mom, of course, you move around. You would apply for another. Hey, I'm tired of doing refrigerators. I want to do dishwashers now. You know, and you would apply for that line and go to a different building because each building built. You know, one built air conditioners, refrigerators. Uh, dishwashers, you know, it was an appliance park is what it was. Yeah. And uh, man, it's amazing. I, uh, and I remember uh, when I was in the military, I went with the call of depots where they totally overhaul. Depots have all the latest technology as far as production, <clears throat> top of the line stuff, huge buildings like GE's. And they would take complete planes in there. They take a plane and literally strip it down to the airframe, inspect the airframe. If they had to replace anything, they put a new rib in, whatever. And then they put it all back together and send it out. And their goal was to take a, a plane that was built in 1980 and make it last to 2023. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, to get their money out of it. And I remember Miss Marie, I walked in. I don't like heights and I don't like depth. In other words, looking down at the Grand Canyon. Have you ever done that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know the feeling you get. Like, yeah. Um, and you know what amazed me about the Grand Canyon? Not just the beauty and the vastness of it. When I look down there, Miss Marie, that's hard to believe. That's over a mile, in some spots, a mile down the Colorado River. Well, Ooh. I was going to say the, the, coolest, the coolest experience we had at the Grand Canyon was experiencing a thunderstorm no, I below us. Ooh, below us. It was in the canyon. Well, we were up on the rim of the yeah, Grand Canyon, yeah. and there was a thunderstorm happening in the canyon. Oh. It was below us. 
I would that was the craziest heard. thing. That is crazy. Just to hear it. I would have never thought that was possible. Yeah, that was cool. It's flipping crazy, girl. <laughs> Golly, I didn't know we could do that, honestly. No. Wow. Yeah. You know, well, I know, you know, you know how you can look over the, the ledge and they have those bars. Now there's some people, and I've seen them, I have pictures of them actually. Where they're over the ledges and they, that has no bars at all. Those people are just, I'm like, ain't no freaking way. Because I get dizzy. I would fall. I, no telling how many people have done that over the years. But anyway, I'd like you. I'd lean over that thing and I'd, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking over. And man, that makes you dizzy. That is yeah. crazy depth. I mm -hmm. never knew that the the earth was that deep. You know, the crust and everything. You go down a mile, Miss Marie. That is unbelievable. Um, you know, the painted forest is out there. The, the uh, uh, what is it called? Petrified forest also. Oh. You ever been there? I That I haven't been to yet, no. That's amazing. That is flipping amazing. But, you know, all of that was, uh, you know, the result of the water. It just shows you how far out the water went, you know, because that's in Arizona. Uh well, you know, I mean, yeah, it's all the same state, but I mean, it's a different part of Arizona. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just not like you drive across the street and there's a painted desert. <laughs> so this shows you how vast that that uh, water was. I don't know if all of that was under the ocean or if it was just water that ran through that particular area. I don't know, but man, you know, but why did it do the painted desert and the petrified forest the way it did in that part of Arizona and yet did the Grand Canyon in the other part? I don't know. You know, the Salt Lake Valley used to be underwater. I know. That's amazing in itself. You guys got to, over there in Arizona, guys, if you've never been there, Arizona, Utah, uh, <clears throat> Wyoming, unbelievable jewels of history. Uh, just, yeah, that Salt Lake City and all that just fascinates me. And no matter how many times I go by there, it just, I'm just dumbfounded. Um, because you're right. You're right. Now, where is it where the water's still there? Well, the Great Salt Lake. Okay, and then you have it's, the Salt Lake Flats or whatever they're called. Yeah, the the Salt Flats where they do the you know speed, speed timing for yeah, different yeah. vehicles and things like that. Sure. Is that Bonneville, Utah? Bonneville Flats, yeah, because that's that's what it was back in the day. It was Lake Bonneville that covered oh, the Salt okay. Lake Valley. Okay. That's what it was called. So has it ever been underwater in modern times, or was this prehistoric times? Uh, prehistoric times, not prehistoric. modern. Okay, I didn't realize, I, I did not know how far back it went. Uh, yeah, but I'm very familiar. Not in my that. lifetime. Yeah, well, it's a little surprising, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, know since I went to school with the dinosaurs and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I've I've seen people float in that water. Yeah. You can't you can't sink in it. Well, right. the great the Great Salt Lake is like the uh, the Dead Sea in uh, Israel. It's got a high salt concentration to it, so people can float in very shallow water. As a matter of fact, when we first moved out here, I think the first summer we were out here, we went out to the Great Salt Lake because Joe, um, he's he's very solid, and he's never been able to float before. Yeah. So he wanted to test this theory. He's like, well, let's see if I can actually float. And the, the crazy thing is the Salt Lake, at least at the time we went, we walked out probably a quarter mile into the lake, in the water. Oh my God. Oh my God. And it was only up like just past our knees. Yeah. It wasn't very deep, it was super shallow for, for a way long wow. time. And uh, it was up just past our knees, and he was finally like, "Well, I'm just going to try floating here." And sure enough, that That's that awesome. shallow of water, even he was able to float. And here's the other thing that you may not know: interesting little uh, tidbit about the Salt Lake brine shrimp, because it's that salty environment. It's full of little brine shrimp. You may remember them from your childhood days in the back of the comic books. Did you ever have sea monkeys? Yes, yes. They come from the Great Salt Lake. They're brine shrimp. That's oh what sea God. monkeys are. I did not know that. Yep. Wow, B. See, that's the reason why you listen to our episodes, guys, because you learn this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I did not I, know that. I am a wealth of useless trivia, so there you go. Well, no, it's not. Well, it's not useless <laughs> to me. 
Uh, because I've been to those places. Guys, if you nod, that's one of the benefits of being in this business is that you get to tra travel and, and experience this stuff firsthand. Uh, Miss Marie, um, it's amazing that all of that at one time was underwater. Because mm -hmm. if you go out there and you stand on the flats and you look up at the mountains around you, that'll give you some idea just how deep that water was to do yeah. all of that. Yeah. And the only way, because not all of Utah is covered in salt, Miss Marie. Correct. So that tells you now common sense. You put two and two together. It's supposed to come out to four. Uh, salt water is what carries that amount of salt. The only reason we don't see that in other areas is because the ocean hasn't receded enough for us to see that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the area of the ocean, for whatever reason, because let's be honest, Miss Marie, that's a massive amount of salt. They've been racing on that stuff. The wind's been blowing, et cetera, et cetera, over the years. And that salt is still there in massive, massive quantities. And as far as your eyes can see, Miss Marie, there's nothing but salt. There was yeah. something very special about that whole area, right? Absolutely. Well, and here, let me let me tie this into network marketing for you. You mentioned the fact that you get to travel a lot. Depending on what company you're associated with, there is a high probability that at some point your company's convention will be in Salt Lake City. <laughs> because <laughs> is there is a large number of network marketing companies headquartered here in Utah. And we have the Salt Palace Convention Center that hosts many network marketing company events because right. it and it's a great aspect of living here, of course, because I've been involved in the industry for so long. I know people in all sorts of different companies and things and they'll say, hey, do you still live in Salt Lake City? My company's coming for the convention. Yes, Want to get yes. together for coffee? I'm like, well, absolutely. absolutely yeah. <laughs> and guys, if you're not aware of Salt Lake City, don't let uh, your preconceived idea, uh, short change the city. It is a wonderful city. It always has been, Miss Marie. Uh, I was shocked by the amount of restaurants and bars it had there, uh, by the quality of the food, the quality of life, uh, the beauty, uh, the weather. I mean, there's so many wonderful things outside of that stupid prison sitting here at the curve of the road, which just dumbfounded me. Why would you put a federal prison or state prison of that magnitude out there in the beauty of all that? You said they're moving it, so that's good. Yeah, yep, and yep. Uh, the road system was fantastic. I mean, there's so many. I'm amazed that there's not more people moving to Utah. Oh, uh, there are. They they've they've figured it out. They're coming now because everybody's fleeing California. So, yeah. yep, they're well, coming. Yeah, well, the same thing to Idaho, and uh, I know the the people of Boise. You know, I think you and I touched on it. People of Boise. Uh, it's well documented. You can go to there again, screw tube, and you can see where people are telling the Californians, don't come here bringing that shit here. You, mm -hmm. I mean, they're having confrontations. You're not bringing that shit out here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> remember, remember why you left. Don't bring your trash with you. Leave it That's behind. Right. Exactly. Leave that trash back there. Um, well, you know, when you think about it, Miss Marie, when you drive through Colorado, and guys, there again, uh, if you're in network marketing, you get a chance, you go out there, please take the time. If you've got the money and the freedom, go and take the time. Miss Marie, from the four corners, uh, you know where that is. Yep. A new place, United States, where all four of these uh, states come together. I think it's New Mexico, Colorado, Utah. What's the other one, Miss Marie? Arizona? Arizona. Yeah, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. Uh, guys, no matter which direction you go in, but especially Utah, Colorado, uh, and Arizona. Miss Marie, if you travel from Arizona, uh, basically from the painted forest and the pet uh, painted desert and the petrified forest on up through the Grand Canyon, on up through Colorado and Utah. You go along the border of Utah, Colorado, you you and I talk about it. those beautiful rock formations, the red rock formations in the red desert that's out there, guys. It is beautiful. I have never been a fan, but my gosh, Miss Marie, it is absolutely stunning. The rock formations uh, the sun reflecting in the morning and in the evening on those formations. The formations themselves make you just, you know, and then you guys, you guys have five parks in Utah that are some of the most uh, intriguing parks of all time. All those formations, uh, what is it, Natural Bridge Park or some of the origin. I mean, I could go on and on and on. 
Miss Maria, all that was created by water from Colorado all the way over to Utah, all the way in. And you look at Yellowstone in uh, in uh, uh, Wyoming, and then you look at the beauty of uh, Montana and Idaho, and all of that was formed. So there was something massive on a massive scale. And the reason I bring it up is that of all places, Utah has that much salt, the salt flat. You guys have more in one place. You still have the, the lake, and then you have the salt flat, which just baffles me. Well, you, you think about you think about the way the earth has been formed by the water movement, yes. as you've talked about, the glacial movement that yes. happened. So think about the level of climate change that happened on the earth before man was ever around. There it is right there. Yep. And and, and yeah, that's right. And then not to leave New Mexico out, because if anybody's ever been to New Mexico, there is uh what is that, Miss Marie? We talked about it. I've not been there. Where the crawling rocks are. I told oh. you about that. Yeah, I can't remember what that's called. I know. I know. I know. Did you ever see the did you ever see that? I, I think you looked it up on the internet. Because you're like, what? What are those? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? Um crazy. But all of that was created by water from New Mexico all the way up. I can't speak much for California because there's not much evidence. But if you go to New Mexico, because, you know, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, are there's a lot of desert in mm -hmm. those, a lot of those states. And once you get past that, uh, really, once you get past Oklahoma, do you know Oklahoma has desert? Do you know that? Uh, I haven't really been in Oklahoma. So well, you're no. not missing much, but <laughs> I just don't <laughs> <let you> know. <laughs> there's desert there, too, believe it or not. And, uh, of course, there is in Texas. My yeah. point is that somehow, some way, all of that was underwater. And I don't know if that was the beachfront where all that sand is or not. <laughs> Fred Flintstone must have had a hell of a house <laughs> in front of that back then. Well, guys, as she said, you know, this does tie into network marketing because, look, we're talking about personal experiences, not just from her job. Look, network marketing, it's absolutely right. Salt Lake City is the epicenter. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. I would venture to say there's very few outside of maybe California uh, that has as many network marketing companies and, and the history of network marketing and technology, Miss Marie, you're shortchanging Utah as an epicenter as well, probably could rival uh, Silicon Valley to some degree. Uh, just you guys have so much going on out there that most people have no clue. Well, just, just down the block from me is the beginning of Silicon Slopes here in Utah because all go. the California companies are coming. See there? Oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing, guys. They've ruined the state of California. Now they're trying to ruin the state of Utah. You better get there <laughs> before they do. <laughs> uh, wonderful food, wonderful people. And I mean that sincerely. I have been there so many times, Miss Marie, I could not even tell you. I've been in Orem. I've been in Salt Lake City. I've been in uh, Provo. Provo. Yep. Um, I've been up to Sundance. I mean, it's just I've never had a bad experience. And it's a stunning, uh, I've been to St. George, Utah, which is beautiful in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much like the red rocks of, it's got all that red rock and it's much like Colorado. Yeah. Uh, St. George is beautiful in itself. Love it. Love the setting. And uh, guys, you're missing out. This is the kind of travel and the kind of lifestyle you can have. Miss Marie, when we would go there for any kind of convention or anything, we took an extra three to four days and we just got out. Yeah. We traveled your state and we go over to Colorado. That's how I know a lot about those uh, uh, formations. And I mean, you get out there. I don't know what the highway that runs almost parallel to the state line, Miss Marie. It ain't nobody out there. <laughs> you break down out there, your ass is in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, know you see, about? you see that, you see that freeway sign that says "last gas for the next hundred three miles." You better fill up. You just fill up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you know what fascinates me even more than formations and stuff sometimes, and I'll say is we'll cut, it, we'll close this show, Miss Marie. At nighttime, you'll see lights out there in the freaking middle of nowhere, and there's times you can see a home, Miss Marie. Who in the hell lives out there? <laughs> How do you make a living? Do you realize how far you'd have to drive to make a living? Now, I know there's some power plants out there. I've seen them. They're uh, built in the base of the mountain or at the base of the mountains. Huge power supply facilities. I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah. 
Well, I, I don't know. Pe people that don't like those city folk and like to have a little bit of land, that's who lives out there. I dare you to go out there at night on their property. I dare I you. Do. <laughs> I dare any of you. You want to know what a true American's about and what a, oh my gosh, go out there at nighttime on their property. You will not like what happens. That's not a that's not a threat. That's reality, Miss Marie. You you know that. You don't go out there. Hell, I don't even know if you go out there during the day because they live so far out there that if a stranger shows up, they're in their mind, if a stranger shows up on my property, this is not a good thing. Right? Well, they may not shoot you, but they will greet you with a double barrel. <laughs> I was gonna say, they're not coming out to shake your hand. That's for damn sure. They're gonna come out there. What are you doing out here? Who are you? What are you doing out here? I mean, let's be honest, even the federal agents won't go out there unarmed, Miss Marie, and by themselves. Yeah. So this was the travel edition of the yeah. solution. <laughs> oh, hey, it was the geography slash yeah. geography history slash travel edition. <laughs> but what a great one. You know what? We promoted uh, tourism uh, throughout our Western uh, United States. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of great, beautiful, and I, you know that. I mean that sincerely. I can see why you and your husband live there. I can see where you guys will probably never leave there. Totally get that. Amazing stuff. I hope to come back there someday, Miss Marie, before I get to the point where I can't travel. Well, <clears> I'd love to take the wife out there. I really would. Um, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, <clears throat> and unless you see it in, in uh, person, and we have one in smaller scale out here in um, – Oh, I'll have to tell you later. I can't remember the um, that marble they used to build the the Mormon church out there. Oh, yeah, the, uh, you know, the temple. Is, yeah, but it's the marble. There's a certain design and a certain uh, marble that's used for a certain temple, and you can't build it without authorization from uh, Salt Lake City. <clears throat> and they built one out here, uh, probably. 11, 12 years ago now. Uh, but anyway, the point is, is that uh, guys, if you go to Salt Lake City, you got to go down there to the temple. I went to the uh, library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've, I can't, and I, I'm not going to lie because I, I don't want to, Miss Rihanna, I don't know if they let us in because we weren't Mormon back then. Well, you can't get into the temple. Mm -hmm. Once the temple is no, no. consecrated, you can't get into those. No, but, no, no. We didn't are you talking about the library? Yeah. You know where the library is, right there by the church on the campus. Yeah. Hmm. It's huge. Unless they had something going on. I Yeah, I don't know. It's just, as far as I know, it's well, only the temple that you can't get into. It's yeah, not, yeah, we knew that going there. Card-carrying right. LDS member. Right. <clears throat> I can't remember if we went in the library or not. You would think something that of magnitude would I remember. But I remember we were there. I remember that. I want to say that we did not get in. It could have been that it was under construction or something. There was something about it that we weren't allowed, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, being outside and looking at it, it's a beautiful campus mm -hmm. that it's built on. And uh, it's on the northern side of the city, if I'm not mistaken, not far from the basketball arena and all that. Is yep. That yep. Yeah, Temple, thought... Temple Square, middle of Salt Lake City. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we walked there from the uh, basketball facility. Mm-hmm. And then we went out to some of the eateries and bars and stuff. So, uh, man, if you guys ever get a chance, you got to go there. It is uh, an amazing thing. You can see the temple. The marble itself and the structure and the architecture, Miss Marie, is very impressive. Yeah. And, uh, and massive in size. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Miss Marie. What are, this, was, this was a good one. I enjoyed it. You, you taught me a lot. I did not know some of that. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Yeah, well, you did. And the good thing is you could stay with me because we went from the four corners uh, of uh, the United States uh, through Colorado and all that. You knew exactly what I was talking about and where I was talking about in all the formations. And that's great. It makes a great conversation when somebody can relate and visualize all that. But uh, I'll never forget that. I told the wife, I said, you got to see that. Well, I don't think the desert's pretty. Miss Marie, before I ever went out there, I never thought the desert was pretty. But once I got out there, and I am closing with this, I was dating a girl at one time. She said, hey, will you come over uh, after work before sunset? And I said, sure. And I really didn't want to do it. So I said, sure. And uh, 
And I went out there. And so we went up this, this mountain. And I'm thinking, what in the world are we doing? And she's in a hurry. And I'm driving. She's like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And she wouldn't tell me why. And so we get out and the road literally comes to an end. It literally stops. It does not go over top of the mountain or anything. And so we're at the top of this mountain. And I mean, it's almost like that, Miss Marie. And I'm thinking, where in the hell? She could shoot my ass and I'll never, nobody will ever find me out here. And she goes, come on, come on. She grabs me by the hand and we run out there. And now we're hiking across boulders three or four times the size of this house. I mean, huge boulders. And we're out in the desert. And she says, sit down. And so we sit down and we're staring out over this valley as the sun went down. And being a young man, I'm like, you know, she was being romantic. I'm like, oh, God, you know, <laughs> I look back on that, Miss Marie. The reason I tell that story, because it reminds me of the beauty of your all state as the sun sets. Mm-hmm. It is on according to where you're sitting. It can be a beautiful thing to see. Yep. I'll never forget that. It's one of the greatest moments. And that's when I realized how beautiful the desert could be, Miss Marie. It's an amazing thing. You can find beauty in stuff like that. You know what? For sure. Absolutely. And you have it every day. I do. I'm spoiled. <laughs> I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to hop off here. Miss Marie, what is Monday's topic? Do you know? Well, Monday, we are going to be talking about social proof in network marketing. Social so proof. that'll be our topic for Monday. Is that March 1st already? It is. Can you believe that? 11 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. Join us. <laughs> yeah. You talk about that subject right there? Yep. Social proof in network marketing. That is Monday's topic, guys, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, as always. And guess what, Miss Marie? March 1st is the launch of our new website and the launch of a new direction for our program and our future uh, as uh, some of the leaders in this industry. I'm, no one's doing what we're doing, and I'm very proud of that. And uh, we're really going to start to reach out to the rest of the world from this point on. A lot of excitement coming. A lot of excitement. A lot of good things going on. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great weekend. God bless. Be safe. We'll see you guys Monday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Let's see if I can get this right. Thank you for listening to the MLM Solution Podcast. For more info, visit our website, themlmsolution.net. Please follow us on the following platforms, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And share this podcast with our fellow network marketers around the world by hitting the share button on our various platforms.